You can download the arts in the video for free, link in the description. For the grid based party follow system, we will first create a follower scene that will represent each of the party members. Create a new scene with the node 2D as the core. Right click, rename, rename it to follower, and a sprite 2D node as a child. We set the texture filter to nearest as we're using pixel art. From here, you can change properties on the sprite 2D to suit your game better. And don't worry about setting the texture as we will do that inside the code to ensure that each party member can look unique from one another when adding them to the scene. Go to scene, then save as, and save it. Then select the follower node 2D and add a script. Inside, we'll define two variables. Sprite will hold a reference to the sprite 2D node. Anton Ready makes it so that this variable is established once the follower node and its children have loaded because in the case that we change the name of the sprite 2D or move it in the scene tree, we will only need to update this variable rather than every line of code that references the sprite 2D. Target pawns is the position that the node is moving towards. The player script will set this later to ensure that each follower node is in the correct order and going to the correct position. We will then create a custom function called setup which will have a built-in variable that will hold a string for the sprite's texture. This function will be called once by the player when the follower node spawns in and we use a custom function instead of the ready function as we want to pass a custom sprite texture to make the individual party members unique while copying the same scene. Inside the setup function, we will first check while not sprite, meaning that sprite is null or not equal to any value. Then we await get tree or physics frame. While we'll run the code inside and stop any code outside from running until the while loop is complete. This code simply ensures that we don't run the next line of code until the sprite is set. We do this as the player could call and run this function immediately, which could cause an error as the sprite node might not be loaded into the scene when this code is called. And we don't use a ready function as we want the player to pass the sprite texture for this party member. Once the sprite node is loaded, we will set the sprite texture to the built-in sprite texture variable using load. Load will simply grab and load the file from the location that we provide with the sprite texture variable. Inside the built-in physics process function, we will first check if global position is not equal to the target pause. If so, then we will do our animation code first. We will define a variable that stores the direction that we are looking towards. To get this, we do target pause minus global position. Then we normalize the value. Normalize simply forces the x and y values to be equal to a minimum of negative one and a maximum of one. Then we check if we are looking towards the left or right. Then we set the flip h of the sprite to dir.x less than zero, which this will return true when looking to the left, flipping the sprite, else it will return false when looking to the right, which is the default looking direction for the follower sprite image that you can download free, link in the description. Finally, we simply set the global position to the target pause. Now to have the player update the target position and spawn in the follower scene, go to your player script. Inside, we'll have two constants and four variables. Tile size is the size of the tiles, and follower scene preload will hold a reference to the follower scene. We make these constants as we don't intend to change their values during runtime when the game is running. We get the path to the follower scene, find it in the bottom left file browser, then right click it, press copy path. You can now use control or command plus V to paste it. A preload is the same as using load. However, with preload, the stream path to the scene is constant. It can't be changed during runtime. Similar to the difference between variable and constant, with preload being like a constant and load being like a variable, both preload and load will provide a reference to the scene file where the string path is, which we can later use to add the follower node to the scene. As for the variables, followers is an array that will only store 2D nodes and will hold a reference to each follower node, allowing us to keep track of the order of the follower nodes as well as set their target position. Distance spacing is the amount of tiles between each follower node. Having this set at one will make the nodes next to each other. Trail points is an array that will hold the previous positions that the player was, so that we can know where to position the followers, as to make them look like they are following the exact footsteps of the player. To update the target pause of the follower node, we will create a custom function called follower logic. This will be called every time we change the player's position. Inside, we will first check if the followers array is empty, meaning that there are no party members. If so, then we use return to skip all the code below. Otherwise, we first add the new player position to the trail points array. Push front simply adds the player's global position value at the front of the array. Then we do a check to ensure that the trail points array doesn't have more values than needed. We define a variable to store the maximum amount of trail points that we need. This is equal to the size of the followers array plus one multiplied by distance spacing. We do plus one as we require an additional trail point for setting position and we multiply this by distance spacing to ensure that there are position values that exist which take into account the distance spacing. Then we use a while loop for the trail points array being bigger than the max trail points. Then we remove the last value from the trail points array until we are under the maximum so that the trail points array doesn't infinitely grow bigger and take up FPS. Additionally you can remove the last value of an array by using the popback function. Finally to update the target position in each follower node we use a for loop to iterate through each follower in the followers array. The follower array will store a reference to each follower and using a for loop makes the i variable that we just made up for the loop equal to the value that we are up to when we are searching through the follower array. Additionally, because we are grabbing the size of the follower array, not just the follower array on its own, due to needing to know the order of the follower nodes, if for example there are two followers added, then i will equal zero, go through all the code in the for loop, then i will equal one and go through all the code in the for loop again, and then the for loop will be complete. If there are more followers added, then i will continue to increase until it reaches the size of the followers array. We create a variable for the trail points array position that has the design position of the current follower node that we are up to in the for loop. This is equal to i plus one multiplied by distance spacing. We do plus one as the for loop will start at zero, not one. And we make sure to multiply by distance spacing, take it into account when grabbing a value from the trail points array as the values in the trail points array are the player's previous positions. Finally, we check that the trail points array has the position of the trail index that we want to grab. Then we grab the followers array at the position of i. Then we set the target points to the trail points array at the position of the trail index. Now to make the follower logic run inside of your physics process function,
function. Make sure to call the follow a logic function every time the player's position changes, as we want to record the new position inside the trail points array. And we also want to update the target pods of all the follower nodes. Now to spawn in a follower node and set them up properly, we will create a custom function called spawn follower, which will have two built-in variables, one to pass the follower sprite texture, and the other to define the position that the new follower should spawn at, whether that is above, below, or to the side of the last follower node. Additionally, we will set spawn dir to a vector2.down. This provides a default value and will make it so that you don't require passing a spawn dir every time you want to spawn the new follower node, unless you don't want them to spawn below the last follower node. Finally, we define a variable that will hold a new copy of the follower scene. This can be done by using instantiate on the follower scene preload for setting the position of the new follower. We'll first create a variable that will hold the base position. This is the position that we want to add the offset of the spawn dir variable to. We first check if there are any followers already added. If so, then we add the last follower's global position, as otherwise we would just use the player's global position. Then we define a variable for the final spawn pause, which is equal to the base pause plus spawn dir multiplied by tile size. This will allow us to ensure that the follower node spawns on a certain side of the last follower node or player node. Additionally, we also make sure to append the player's global position if there are no positions within the trail points array. This is simply to update the trail points array, as otherwise the players will need to move once before the follower nodes can set their target position appropriately. Then we set the global position and the target pause or the follower node to the spawn pause variable, and we also add the spawn pause to the trail points array. Finally, we add the new follower to the scene. We grab the parent of the player, which is hopefully the topmost node in your level. We do this instead of adding the follower as a child of the player. To avoid the player offsetting the follower position when the player moves, as we want the followers to have their own independent position moving, then we grab the function add child and we use call deferred and pass the new follower scene. We add call deferred to ensure that the function add child is ran at the end of the current frame. This will avoid potential issues that could arise due to certain dependencies in your code. Then we grab the new follower scene and call the setup function we created earlier with the sprite texture from the spawn function being passed along. This way, each follower can look unique from one another with a different texture. Additionally, we make sure that this line runs after the add child line as we require the node to be added to the scene before we can call the setup function. And because of call deferred, this ensures that at the end of the current frame, add child runs and setup runs immediately after. Finally, we add the new follower scene to the follower array. Now an example of using the spawn follower function can include inside the player script, calling the function, then passing the texture that you want the follower to look like. Keep in mind to get the path of the texture. Find the texture in the file browser in the bottom left, then hit right click and hit copy path. Then you can choose to either use the default spawn dir or you can set it. For the best results, use vector2.left, right, up, down, or zero. Additionally, because spawn follower is like any other function, you can call it from other scripts within the same scene as the player node by first finding and grabbing the player node, then calling the spawn follower function and passing the texture that you want the follower to look like and the spawn dir if you don't want to use the default value. Now you have a grid-based RPG party follow system that you can add to any of your top-down 2D games. Don't forget that you can check the project files, link in the description.